to approach this is to look from the point of view of uh, blind blind signatures, right? I guess blind signatures are uh, mostly familiar to this audience, right? Yes. Um, or should be should be familiar for every Wasabi user, for every Wasabi power user, I guess. Um, so the idea of credentials is similar in the sense that you get some blinded token that was signed by some server and the server does not see the message that was being signed. Now, the ad additional idea to a credential is that it's not only a message that it's being signed, but instead it's multiple attributes that can be signed. And um, these attributes can be anything. Um, and um, now the interesting thing is that you can selectively reveal these attributes. You can say here, I have a token and in this uh, token there, I have, there is this attribute and it has this value. So the um, no, standard example is you have a token from your government, let's say, and it says your age, basically your, or say, let's say birth date is, is one attribute and that is signed. Now, what you can do with that, you can not only show your attribute, you can also show that it's in a certain range. You can do a range proof. So what you would do is if you go to the cinema, you don't have to reveal your age. You don't have to reveal anything else that is included in your credential. You only have to show that you are older than 18 years. And that works with uh, such a credential. And um, these attributes are pretty flexible. You can, for example, uh, besides range proofs, you can, you can show that if you have two blinded tokens, that attributes are the same, uh, for example. Um, yeah, um, so mathematically, I think the best way to think about this um, is as uh, Peterson multi-commitments. So uh, in normal Peterson commitments, right, you have some randomness and you use that to commit to a value. Uh, and you basically have two different uh, generators, um, group generators. Now with these multi-commitments used in um, some of these uh, credential approaches, you have randomness and now you commit to multiple attributes, not only a single one. And usually you have as many uh, generators as you have attributes. So I think uh, historically, one of the first notions of these credentials was uh, by Brands. I think Peter Brands, not quite sure. Yes. He has, uh, he wrote his PH, PhD. Th yeah. Steve, Stefano, I think, not Peter or something like that. Okay, um, Brands is his last name. <laughs> uh, and he um, wrote a PhD thesis about um, his idea of doing credentials. And it's actually quite re uh, interesting. I can uh, recommend it. It's um, not too technical. Um, and he has a lot more ideas than just credentials. Uh, but one problem with it was um, that so far, every attempt at proving it's secure in the random oracle model failed. And um, this is where this anonymous um, credentials light paper comes in, because they have a construction that is um, provably secure. Um, and it, you can do basically the same things or very similar things as with Brent's credentials. Um, there might be one minor problem. This, when last time I looked at it, I did not really solve because in the paper they say for 128 bit security, we recommend using a group of 576 bits. And um, of course, our SACP group is only 256 bits. So it's not sure if we can use that. Um, it's often the case that due to the proof, these groups need to be 
much larger than they are used in practice. Even for Schnorr signatures, our um, uh, lip sec or our SecP group would actually be too small for 128 bit security. Uh, mostly people say, yeah, that's just an artifact of the proof. Uh, it doesn't really matter that much. But um, in order to verify that, uh, we, need, we would need to look into the proof more closely. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Uh, did you finish? Yeah, that's almost everything I wanted to say. Um, like the other thing I wanted to say is that uh, these tokens are pretty flexible compared to just uh, Schnorr signatures. So at um, the Building on Bitcoin conference 2018, I talked about how to use this to basically swap a token that is in or that, that it was created with an anonymous credential with an on-chain or off-chain Bitcoin on Lightning without the server knowing that this happened and without having to trust the other party. Yeah, thank you. I'd like to point out, so we are reviewing right now a paper called Anonymous Credentials Light. And as Jonas uh, pointed out, this is an improvement on the brand's credentials. In fact, it has a... It has one difference between the brand brand credentials. Well, well, this is more secure, of course, because the brand's credentials couldn't be proven. But actually, these tokens are unlinkable. Um, yes, unlinkable with each other. So, if you have a credential, you can create as many blind signatures for it, and you can prove that credential as many times as you want unlike the brand credentials, because there they are linkable. So you can only use up to as much signatures, as much uh, the, 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 the designer uh, allows you, in, in our case, would be the coordinator. So that's actually something that we would desire if we would want to build on top of this. Anyway, uh, I, um, if I may add to that, I would say that uh, brand's credentials are also unlinkable um, if you can talk to the server, right? Because that's what you also usually do in eCash. You basically show the serial number of your old token. You create a new token. You show that the tokens are the same in zero knowledge. And then you get a signature on the new token. And that way you get an unlinkable token. I. I I, I think um, the advantage with anonymous credentials light is that you can do that without having to talk to the server. Yes, uh, it, it, it's called, I think, Ray Schwanz, or, or that's what usually comes up. Um, anyway, uh, <clears throat> so, so a bit, bit more there, because the same authors were working on this, this for, a, for probably a decade after this paper, and and they actually came up with something called mercurial signatures where uh, they don't need so much crypto as much as in this paper, but, but in a very straightforward way, they could achieve the exact same thing with, with these mercurial signatures. And even more, uh, they were working on something called delegatable uh, anonymous credentials and there the trick is that you could actually delegate the ownership of the credential to someone else so in our case that would be I think uh, giving uh, money to someone and I wouldn't be able to redeem it but you would which is actually pretty nice Oh my God, I wasn't talking. Last thing you said was in our case, that would be. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because I think it's recording everything what I'm saying, but uh, you didn't hear. So I think what I said is in our case, it would be that we could give the, we could give, well, pay someone in a coin join round 
uh, without us being able to redeem it, but that someone would be able to redeem it as an output of the coin join. Uh, so, so, so I just wanted to point out that uh, the authors were actually working on this this line of research for a long time, and they think they came up with much better constructions and easier ones too. So, if someone would like to to look into these anonymous credentials, then uh, definitely look into the newer stuff there. Um, Okay, uh, so far, any comment here? Because I want to approach it also from a coin join point of view that why did we, why did we want it to use it and why we don't want to use it anymore? So, in the, the the problem that we are trying to solve is to be able to 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 have some kind of divisible e-cache system actually that that allows us to come with any input in in a tor ident in an anonymity network identity and then we we get back some some credit for 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 that input and and if we come with another input later, uh, then we get back some credit and then somehow we can combine those credits and uh, came with only one output or we could also break those credits down. And with a, with a stupid blind signature scheme, we would have to create a bunch of uh, denominations and a bunch of signatures. Uh, so why this paper would be handy here because <clears throat> we still need to create a bunch of denominations but we wouldn't need to create a bunch of signatures the user could create uh, the signatures uh, uh, the blind signatures for their credentials uh, later however we actually came up with a, with the solution um, based on homomorphic cryptographic commitments, range proofs, and a blind signature scheme that, that, uh, that works with this homomorphic cryptographic commitments in a way that we can actually come with an anonymity network identity, uh, register input, get back something, come with another anonymity network identity, register another input, get back something and we could combine the two something in zero knowledge that in a way that we could prove the server that we could make any kind of outputs out of those uh, and we could have done it with these anonymous credentials in some way or form uh, but we would still had to have denominations um, in in order to to achieve some kind of privacy, that that was the the sort of line there, right, uh, Jonas? So just just comment. so I understand, instead of uh, registering all inputs at once, you would be able to registering them uh, with different identities, right? Yes, we can come with different identities with any any number of inputs and we we can come with different identities to to register any output that's what we we kind okay. of figured out lately so uh, so you would provide a let's say one bitcoin input and another one bitcoin input later and then you would get two one input one bitcoin tokens and that could be used to add a to Bitcoin output or something like that. And you don't have to show that your inputs were one Bitcoin, you just show that the sum is equal to two Bitcoins. Yes. Right? Uh, in fact, even more, we can merge them and break them down in any way or shape or form. Um, I'm not sure, okay, I, I, I will risk, uh, because this, 
this session is about anonymous credentials and I will bring up some topics, but yeah, I will risk risk it to to explain explain it to you because it's it's really interesting and I think it's really novel. Novel. Um, you can think about it. The breaking part is easy, and and I think that that you understand it easily, and I can explain it to you because if you have one Bitcoin. And you want to pay 0.1 Bitcoin to someone, then it would be like this: you create two uh, pedders and let's say pedders and commitments um, to 0.1 Bitcoin and to 0.9 Bitcoin. Uh, those will be your outputs in the coin join, right? So far, it's clear. Yep. So, and then you register uh, that two pedders and commitment and um, uh, pedders and commitment for 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 your one Bitcoin input, and you of course tell the the coordinator that hey, this uh, one Bitcoin input, I, I'm going to prove that it is mine, and this is the sum of my pedders and commitments. By the way, we we create more patterns and commitments with with zeros, but but uh, it doesn't matter for for now. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. For, yeah, uh, and and then uh, we also found a blind signature scheme that works with patterns and commitments. So the coordinator uh, can give us something uh, from what we can create. A signature on our values, which is cool, because then we can just come at output registration that uh, hey, I'm registering this 0.1 Bitcoin output and I have a signature on it, and with another anonymity network identity, hey, I'm registering this 0.9 Bitcoin output and I have a signature on it. So this is the breaking part. Mm -hmm. And the merging part is is different because we couldn't figure out with the with the pedders and commitments range proofs and yeah of course there, there needs to be range proof along with the pedders and commitments but I I, I think that's obvious uh, anyway uh, we couldn't figure it out with with the blind signature scheme on pedders and commitment but. We actually had to use BLS signatures, and with that we could figure out how to how to merge together uh, more than one commitment. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. But yeah, any question on that, or we can get back to this paper? <laughs> yeah, I don't quite understand why that wouldn't work. If you if you let's say have a Point one and a point nine uh, to Bitcoin token, right? Yes. Uh, don't you just have to show to the server that both tokens sum up, or or maybe even better, you create a new token with a one Bitcoin value. Uh, you don't show the server your uh, or the value of the new token, and but you show the server that the sum of the old tokens is the value of the new token. Wouldn't that work uh, for your, merging? Your first suggestion, yes, that works. Uh, it just, there is some probably negligible privacy loss, right? Like you, you, tell, you expose the server that you have a 0 0.1 Bitcoin and a 0 0.9 Bitcoin uh, Pedders and commitments and the server. I don't think, at least with anonymous credential slide, I don't think you have to do that necessarily. I think you can show that the sum is the value of your new token, and you don't have to show anything more to the server. I think. Uh, with your su first suggestion, I was talking about that, right? Okay. That. Uh, that's not a huge privacy thing, so so it can work, but we figured out how to do it even without that. 
So your second suggestion, could you repeat it maybe? I'm not sure I understood. Uh, I thought I was only making one suggestion, <laughs> so perhaps that was that. <laughs> I'm not sure what the second one would be. So your first suggestion was to take two blind signature of 0.1 and 0.9 and register them together to the server, uh, to the coordinator. Is that correct? Um, perhaps I wouldn't call this registering. I would just call this like uh, perhaps like just a reissuance. We've used that term before. You have a token and you just want to get a new one with a new serial number and uh, these tokens are unlinkable. And the same would work if you show two tokens um, and a new token where the new token is the sum of the um, former tokens and you don't have to show the actual values to the server. You just have to show that the sum matches to the new value. And um, so the, then you wouldn't have that privacy loss of having to show the individual values of the old tokens. Yes. So the thing is, we get the signature, the the blind signature on the data itself, which means if we want a reissuance phase there, then we would have to expose the the values. Okay. So there might be some, some scheme that works with that. Well, with BLS signature, we, we, we actually figured it out how to, how to do that because there uh, the signatures actually has the message itself. So um, it, it, it's really fresh. I just learned about it today. And, 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 and something like that, that you can give the two to blinded BLS signature to the coordinator and prove that their sum is this value. And because of the, the blind BLS signatures are the, the, the unique tokens there, this way we, we, we won't have problems. So with anonymous credentials, I think you would have to you would have to to create a bunch of um, bunch of denominations, right? I don't think so. I think this is exactly the magic of these anonymous credentials that you can uh, do these uh, sum proofs, similar to what you just described with uh, BLS signatures. Uh huh. Okay, uh, I, uh huh. Okay, that's uh, yeah, that's that's really similar with what we came up with, indeed. But I'm not sure in this paper. Uh, maybe I just didn't go into it. Yeah, the, no, they, I, uh, if I remember correctly, perhaps they're not showing this in this paper. But um, uh, this is something that is like a central concept in the brands, um PhD thesis, and I believe you can do the same thing with anonymous credentials because both types of um, credentials look actually very similar. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure if it would it make sense to to start investigating this and. Uh, instead of doing it with BLS signatures? Actually, um, I think, I don't know, I, I would do whatever is easiest, actually, because I guess for your application, or in general, it doesn't make too uh, big of a difference if you use BLS. I mean, if you think that parents are secure and BLS signatures are secure and this whole a uh, bunch of crypto assumptions, then I think you can just use that if that's easier. I don't think you have to restrict yourself to something that is uh, that works in the discrete logarithm paradigm. 
is the RN BLS signatures work on the discrete logarithm paradigm? No, they use uh, pairings. So it's uh, different, different curves and different crypto assumptions. Oh, okay. All right. So yeah, I, I, I'm not sure it is easier for us because the implementation shins are, I think, still looking behind of the BLS signature implementations. So on the other hand, it's, it's such a simple scheme that even I, they could exp they could even explain it to me who doesn't understand crypto that much so huh. all right okay the the bls thing does it have an implementation and if so how is it called so i can find it i think it does not have implementation in c sharp it has for a couple of languages uh i think the main implementation is c plus plus and there is bindings for that oh, okay i think there's an implementation of uh, brands credentials in c sharp yes. right that's yes. u proof library okay yes i was playing around with that in fact i ported it to dotnet core and uh it's not that obvious how to use that but the code is very very clean and very nice so i would have loved to go with you proof <laughs> but, <Okay. yeah. laughs> but what's the problem with you proof um well that doesn't solve our problem as far as i understand it's uh you still need a bunch of stuff to do with that also people are talking about that it's not very secure and things like that um no one's found a, a vulnerability yet <laughs> brands credentials so as far as i know mm -hmm. um i don't know it's a difficult question but um i think the the sum proof that i mentioned earlier should work just as well with brands credentials you don't need multiple de denominations Because Brent's credentials would be able to prove the sum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And does it have also, how would the range proofs apply to that? Uh, yeah, you probably still have to do these range proofs to show that um, the values don't overflow. But I, I'm not sure if the U-proof library does that already for you. I haven't really looked into the library mm -hmm. ever. And what else there is? Um, how about the merging of the coins? I think that could be a problem there. That uh, you cannot merge two attributes together um, in a way that it both prevents double spending and and you don't expose the attribute you know the values only the sum of them I, i'm not sure that's that's possible uh, i think it is i think that's the point of brand's credential if you do a reissuance you don't have to show all the attributes um you just assure the server you prove to the server that your new token doesn't have any other value than the sum of your old tokens combined i think and this is possible with brands credentials you don't need the reissuance there yeah you would need the reissuance okay so now finally there is an argument why our scheme is better <laughs> because we don't need ratio and scheme there. Okay. Uh, but for unknown credentials, light. But uh, okay, so so I actually. But that sounds yeah, that sounds like something that uh, BLS or pairings could do, uh, like merging different um, credentials together without communication with the server. So at least to me, that sounds plausible. Yeah, actually, I, I, I'm just going to read a few things about 
here is that uh, you prove about you prove from the the article that to to be for everyone knows what we are talking about from the efficiency point of view therefore the you prove credential system based on brands work acquired and implemented by microsoft seems attractive you prove does not allow unlinkable reuse of credentials in order to unlinkability use a credential again in order to unlinkably use a credential again a user must get it reissued um which well which which, which actually suggests that in fact that this paper um doesn't have linkable credentials only un unlinkable on these lines don't suggest that but that's what's in the paper let me see one more thing there um, when such a proof is carried out it cannot be linked to previous uses of the same credential or any other identifying information about the user ah oh, yes this is this is what i what i'm talking about here we actually want the opposite uh, in order to avoid the worst spending we want to use uh, we want a use to be linked to previous uses of the same credential uh, which brands provide and this scheme does not I'm not sure how hard would it be to to implement it. Would it be only a simplification, or this would be a major headache to to implement linkable credentials on top of uh, on top of uh, ACL construct? Yeah. On top of what construct? ACL. Uh, th this paper is ah. anonymous credentials light ACL. Yeah, I think that's easy because uh, one of the attributes would just be the serial number that the server stores. I mean, the server stores the serial numbers of coins that have been used, right? So, okay, that wouldn't. Yeah, for, that would, <laughs> that I, wouldn't I, get, I guess, yeah, you would need the reissuance again. Right? And you no, need to show the, your serial number and then uh, you get a new token. That, that would also ruin the sum some stuff that we talked about wouldn't it no if you put why a, if you put a serial number into the the attribute then yes you you cannot prove the sum i mean the serial number is there you know uh so what you do is you show your old credentials can be multiple. You show the serial numbers for each of those credentials. You prove that the serial numbers are actually the ones contained in your credentials. The server checks that these serial numbers have not been used. Um, you show the new token that you created with a fresh serial number, serial number that you uh, chose randomly. And then you do the sum proof. And that way you don't have to show anything to the server but the serial numbers. That's smart. Isn't it just like like if we would we would create blind signatures to as many attributes we uh, I don't know. Yeah, the problem is with blind signatures, right, is blind signatures are unstructured. You just have this message and then you can put different things into the message, but then you cannot efficiently prove anything about these individual attributes in your message. And this is why these uh, credential schemes are superior to the normal blind signatures. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, so there may be something here to yeah I'd also like to look into this uh, BLS stuff definitely that seems interesting uh, sure um, 
going to link the repository in the in the comment here but cool. um don't don't share it yet because we did not figure out the name and we have a stupid name for the repo <laughs> for now <laughs> Okay. Um, okay, I see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you guys uh, have anything to to ask or talk about uh, regarding regarding anything? Maybe. Everyone is really silent. No. Go ahead, Lucas. No, I have no no question because I, I I'm not um, I don't know these primitives yet, <laughs> so I have to study a bit more. Yeah, I learned most of that from uh, so Adam Beck. He once gave a presentation about brands credentials at Blockstream, so I learned a lot from him. But that wasn't public, unfortunately. Um, I think I have the slides, but I don't think they're very helpful. So perhaps the best starting point is still um, Brian's PhD thesis. It's very long, but um, just have to check out some parts of it, I think. Mm -hmm. because, because especially the things like this anonymous credential slide, there seems to be like the difficult thing about or to grasp about it is not, I mean, this scheme exists, but the question is how do you use it? And how do you use it with uh, serial numbers and to get eCash tokens with multiple denominations, right? That's not in the anonymous credentials light paper. That's something that uh, Brands talks a little bit more about. And e even more because uh, as we as we reviewed this paper and we, we looked into that, well, how could we use it for eCash kind of stuff? Then we just stumbled upon a, a tremendous amount of, of literature there that how to do uh, divisible eCash systems. And it's really like a couple of hundred of paper is, 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 is going on, on, on this issue. But, uh, but the thing is, they are solving things that we don't need to solve because coin joins are inherently secure. If someone doesn't see their outputs, then it, it, it's not going to sign. And that, that's a huge right. help here. So our job is basically to simplify what they have. <laughs> Right. There's also the concept of offline eCash, which also doesn't seem to be very practical in the Bitcoin world, because in offline eCash, if you double spend, you reveal your secret key, which perhaps as if you're an attacker, that's not a big problem to you because you already have your Bitcoin. So you don't care about the secret keys in your token. <laughs> you have twice as many Bitcoins as you would have normally. So they don't seem to apply. Yeah, uh, that's not even a requirement here because everyone is online. In fact, even all the participants are online, although you're not. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, but this this idea of uh, merging inputs and and so on that's really interesting. I think. Yeah, we are going to work on that and um, either look into that uh, issue. That's where we figured out how things should be. Um, but we are going to, to, to create a draft and, and send it to the Bitcoin dev mailing list and, and, and things like that. And also for the next Wasabi Research Club, uh, Istvan is going to, actually, yeah, he's going to write down exactly this scheme, the cryptography part of it. And and that's what I would like to propose for the next Wasabi Research Club because as we looked through eCash papers and anonymous credential papers and every kind of papers, it looks like this is the simplest and most straightforward solution for 
for really arbitrary coin joins, uh, which we are not going to do, but we would like to have that that flexibility and and that's what lets us improve upon it in the future. Max asked, what about server decided equal value outputs? Anyone understands the question? No. <laughs> All right. Sorry, Max. Uh, we can't reply you. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, yeah, one more interesting thing. <laughs> Uh, Max figured out that Fotaini, one of the author of this paper we are talking about, it was actually had some involvement in Tumblebit. Uh, not sure exactly what, but but yes, she was uh, she was doing something in Tumblebit. Okay. And I think um, if no one would like to say anything, because this was quite a difficult paper, then we can we can cut this short unlike other other conversations and we can we can go f uh, so so do you guys have anything else you would like to talk about? Not yet really. Uh, I mean I'm just fascinated about the things that you guys talked about. Yeah, I think I talked uh, about almost everything I know about it. <laughs> so uh, let me know how this progresses <laughs> and what you find out. Yeah, definitely. Um, we are going to, to, to talk about our scheme in the next Wasabi Research Club, if no one has an objection. Or, or alternatively, we could review uh, Adam Gibson from zero knowledge to bulletproofs uh, paper. I think that could be could be useful, or or our scheme, which might be more might make more sense to be honest. Uh, but it could change. Maybe we figure out oh there is something utterly wrong with this and and then next week would be would be pointless. But I doubt at this point. We really reviewed a lot of things last week. So should the next generation Vasa be mixing technology be the topic of the next <laughs> Wasabi Research Club. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think it's good. Uh, but there was a question from Max uh, that is there a difference for, of users who want to be a part of the equal value denomination and those who want only specific amounts? Yeah, no, th there is no difference. It's a equal value denominations as I imagine it right now, although we did not uh, work this out at all. But I think that could be something that the users uh, create by themselves. So if I participate in a mix, then I'm going to partic I'm going to ask for outputs of of some standard denominations that I I guess I estimate other users. I su suspect other users are going to do too, so that 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 would be it. But I could create outputs in any way, shape, or form, uh, up to the maximum limits, of course, uh, as I as I would like to even do a pay to endpoint transaction in a coin join, which would be neat. <laughs> Damn, that sounds good. Also a really interesting thing, uh, we just had a talk with Taj, Taj, uh, uh, not, not gonna pronounce it, uh, so one of the guys who, who, who came up with the Lightning Network and he actually came up with the CoinSwap protocol. Uh, there is still some d denial of service issues he didn't figure out, 
but he came up with a coin swap protocol that after top root is in Snor and top root is in Bitcoin, then we c he could do coin swaps. Those could be completely unnoticeable, and that's that's uh, really exciting. So I just wanted to share this this uh, this fresh information. Okay. All right. Um, thank you, guys. And I'm sorry for this unconventional Wasabi Research Club now. Um, usually, Aviv does a very good good job at explaining the concept at the beginning, but he he couldn't make it uh, last minute, so no one could really prepare, but N Nick gave a, a, a great summary of the paper. So Absolutely. I mean, you guys did a good job, and thanks for that. Yes, thank, thank you, Nick, and thank you for You're being the special guest of this episode. <laughs> What an honor. <laughs> All right. Then I guess that's it. Like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> bye bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye.